Wow, a gorgeous view of Meru Town. All right, so it's 8.30. Let's just jump into our first conversation of this morning. As promised before we went on break, I have with me Mr. and Miss World Kenya. Both of these two will be representing the nation at an international platform. So allow me to introduce both of them. Stay closer to me. I have the gorgeous finale, Galea. And on my far end, I have Robert Budi Kula. Both of them, congratulations, first of all, on both of your titles. Finale, what does the name mean? I think you're the first person I've ever met with that name. Well, I'll probably be the only one. Mm -hmm. uh, so my name, Finale, my mother and her mother had two very different names they wanted to name me. And they both decided to compromise and made up my name. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I'll be the person to give meaning to my name for wow. the next finale. What, would, what, what meaning would you give it? Well, I, I have a lot of uh, meanings I would love to give it. Yeah. But uh, first and foremost will be responsibility. Uh, a very large responsibility I want to leave behind. Um, mm. As a person, I, I, I pride myself in being very um, empathetic, very compassionate, very selfless. And these are characteristics I hope that remain with my name and mm. remain with my the legacy of my name after I'm gone. Right. And we'll talk about what legacy you want to leave in just a few minutes. Um, Robert, also congratulations on yours. Mr. Kenya, Mr. Mr. World Kenya. This is the fourth time, if I'm not wrong, right, for this title to be in existence compared to Miss um, World Kenya. What for you, what do you think made you, out of about, what, 26 contestants, what made you think that, you know, the, contest, uh, the judges decided to choose you? Um, first of all, I would say it had everything to do with confidence, mm -hmm. and um, I believe I have a winning smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that confidence as well. Yeah, uh -huh. and um, of course I put in work. Right. I put in work. We had time to prepare. Mm -hmm. There was, um, of course, I had to learn how to walk. Mm. Uh, my best friend is male model of the year, 2015. His name is Daryl. So I also had private coaching on the side yeah yes so do like all of you uh, models hang out together since your best friend is also a model like you uh, say? it happened by default he's actually my childhood friend ah. and uh, we just decided to take modeling on different parts so him he mostly does runway mm -hmm. for me I was doing more of sports and commercial modeling why why did you choose sports and commercial uh, because I'm um, a fitness freak. Mm -hmm. um, I spend most of my time in the gym. Mm -hmm. When I go to the gym, I usually tell guys I'm going to the office. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, because of my physique and everything, I'm wearing a suit right now, you mm -hmm. probably can't see it. Mm -hmm. But because of my physique and everything, uh, sports modeling would be a better career for me. Right. You yes. talked about putting in the work, and that's what got you to win this, and even how to work. So you guys are taught how to walk. You just can't walk in. <laughs> it has to be in a certain way. Yes. See, there's, there's patterns. There's, you know, how you're supposed to kick off, you know, right foot fast. There's the tea. It's, it's a whole thing. It's not just how we every day wake up in the morning, get out of bed, and you start walking. Really? It's a whole concept. Like No, you have to show us. Okay, <laughs> maybe not now. Towards the end of the interview. Okay. So there's a certain way, there's an art to the walking in itself. Yes. All right, and then you said you also had to put in the work. Yes. So apart from the walking and getting mm -hmm. it right and mm -hmm. perfecting it, mm -hmm. what else goes into putting in the work that for one to be Mr. World Kenya? Personally, for me, uh, before I started the journey to Mr. World Kenya, mm. I was about 85 kgs, mm -hmm. pure muscle, mm -hmm. uh, which wouldn't have made a cut in Mr. Wild Kenya. Also so what I did is I had to shred my muscle down okay. to now I'm about 76 kgs within a period of about a month. Mm. Yeah, so I did crazy cardio. Um, on top of that, I had to practice smiling on the mirror for hours. That's why you have the gorgeous smile that you are seeing. Yes, I would <laughs> stick on the mirror for hours just smiling nonstop. Um, also, it has everything to do with how you take care of your skin, your haircut. By the way, I shave my own hair. Mm. I do my own head, my own beard. Mm -hmm. I have a machine in the house. I never go to the barber. Um, what else? What else? That's, that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. Let's listen to this other side. So, finale. Yeah. Wow. Did you as well? You have a gorgeous smile as well. You. Did you have to stand in the mirror and practice smiling? Well, uh, no, I love smiling. I'm a very happy person generally. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm one of the people you call a very optimistic person. Mm. So, I'm generally smiling a lot. But I would have done that. I should have, right? <laughs> 
Yeah. So tell me, what is it for you yeah. as Miss World Kenya? What work did you have to put in for you to get this crown? So much, so much. The first, uh, the minute we were called that you guys made the auditions and you guys have training starting, mm. the first thing I did is hit the gym. I started hitting the gym because you have to be very good uh, sports-wise. One of the very important stages of Miss World, especially for the finals, uh, I assumed also for our training, would be sports. Started practicing my talent, and I'm not a born dancer. So I have to practice, 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 day in, day out. I'm practicing dance, uh, the walk, so the catwalk, because um, I've done a lot of runway before, but runway walks and pageant walks are very different. You know what? I feel like you guys should just give us a walking class <laughs> right about now. We have to do that. We're going to have to do that. So the way you walk for a pageant yes. is different from how you'd walk on the yes. runway. Yes. Very different. In so, fact, we will show you. We will. Yeah, you have to show us, all right? Yes. We'll get towards that at the yes. end of, of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But you talked about... Um, so tell me about the process. Yeah. How do you audition? How does someone audition for these things? I so never normally, know how people Normally they put things. up the auditions, they announce for the auditions. Uh -huh. So um, Kula, I think they did Mr. and Miss World, uh, uh, Mr. And Miss World auditions uh, together last year. Yes. And, uh, Kula t I want Kula to speak more about that because he, 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 he's more eloquent. With, uh, with that process. Uh, with that process. All right, Robert, yeah, yeah. Us so that um, last year in 2017 yeah. is when they call for the auditions. Mm. Um, of course, there is the age that makes the cut. Mm. Um, me, it's so unfair. The age limit for Mr. World is so much higher than for Miss World. <laughs> Wait, what's the so age unfair. limit? It's for, for, for men, it's 25. For women? For women, it's 24. Why do you th okay? Well, a, a year it's difference, just, but why? Stay, uh, why? Finale, stay, uh. <laughs> why though? No, no, let him continue. Let him continue. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so back to the auditions. Yeah. So in 2017, when we did the first auditions, um, they were at Two Rivers. Mm. Um, I think almost about a thousand people showed up to audition. Um, then it was initially supposed to happen in 2017, uh, be but because of the political mm. uh, situation that we had in 2017, right. it couldn't happen, so it was pushed this year. So um, this year, they shortlisted guys who made the cut, who they thought had it in them. And uh, we made it about about 33 guys. So from 1,000 to 33 Yes, yes. about 33 guys. So that's three guys are the guys who started the training. Mm. Uh, but then every day, uh, guys were being cut off. Mm. Yes. Also, depending on your discipline, um, how good you can keep time. That's why you saw we were actually here very punctual. Yes, mm. we were here at 6.30. Mm. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. And of course, how you can get your walks. So guys were being cut off. So at the... At the finals, we were about 24. Yes, and um, I, I kept thanking him the whole time because during the finals, we during the whole training period, we were all so nervous because any day anyone might be cut off. You all putting your best A game out there, and I wasn't really like taking pictures or selfies. I was always concentrating, and I was thanking him just on Friday. That thank God you guys used to pull me up for group selfies and everything, right, so we have right. something to count for the training. Yeah. But um, we made amazing friends along the way. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so and you guys friends. also got to become friends there, or prior to that you were also friends? No, we met for the first time over there. In oh, fact, wow. um, how Kula got me to learn his name, it was Kula. Kula. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I was like, food, nobody forgets food. <gasps> nobody can forget food. <laughs> All right, and so yeah. from 1,000 to 24 people, Robert, you've talked about being disciplined, right? Yes. Why is discipline so important, especially even for, for, for the page pageantry world, you know, yes. where perhaps a lot of people may downplay it, but it takes a lot of work from what I've heard, yes. and also it takes a lot of discipline. So why is discipline so important? Um, carrying the Mr. World title means you are... Um you're basically a worker of the nation. Right. Um, you're a role model to young guys who are coming up, mm. to fellow models. Um, you are a servant to the people mm. uh, because it's not just about good looks. It's also about a purpose. It's about your mind, your intelligence, what you can do for the people, how you think about others, how you care about other people. So at the end of the day, discipline comes in because it's a selfless act. It's not just about you. 
you have to sacrifice yourself for other people. So speaking about what um, doing things for people, what would you want to do with your, um, I'm guessing, one-year crown title? What would you want to be doing? Um, just to correct you, Mr. Wild reigns for two years. Oh, it and but for women, unfair. it's one. Another wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. All right, so for the two years. Yeah. So basically, I want to put my efforts into about two things for now okay for now for now yeah. i probably am going to discover more things later on as, right. as i move on right i have um, one more here <laughs> um so uh, one of the things that i want to do basically is um in our society we have so many abandoned old neglected guys mm -hmm. that uh you know you have kids you become a parent later on you become a grandfather we all get old at some point but you see with the nairobi life nowadays kids move from the from the Price wherever zones. they came from yes. and they come to Nairobi and they disappear and most of the time we actually forget we have grandfathers we have grandmothers and there's usually nobody to take care of them so the elderly the elderly okay. so basically what I would want to do is I would want to collaborate with the government and any organization out there to build homes for these guys to look after them to take care of them um, because of my fitness experience I would want to introduce them to new health and fitness tips according to their age. So that you know most of them who feel like they're too weak, they can't walk. Yeah. There's so much that they, they can still do to feel healthier and stronger as they grow older. Okay, so the elderly is one, number two? Number two, I would want to deal a bit with the environment. Nice. And most importantly, Nairobi River. Mm. I live very close to the river, by the mm. way. I live very close to it. Mm. And um, sometimes, you know, because of the sewage and everything, you've, you can you've always, experienced first hand. Yes, uh, yeah. first hand. So, um, the, late, the late Michuki, um, I think, tried to clean the river, and it actually really worked. But I think over the years, it's been neglected and neglected and neglected over and over and over again. So, I might want to kickstart that campaign all over again, mm -hmm. involve the young guys into it, mm -hmm. and everyone can clean a section of where the river passes through them, you oh. know? And involve young people in that. Yes. All right, so finally for you, first of all, I, you hinted that um, you had to start practicing on a lot of your talents so you can prepare for the international yes. um, award. Um, tell me, what are some of your talents? So dancing, uh -huh. I'm really good at swimming. Oh. I'm an amazing public speaker. I love mm -hmm. speaking. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I love um, educating people. I love learning myself. Mm -hmm. But except for that, uh, just like him, we also have a Beauty with Purpose um, competition. And it's a huge part of the Miss World, especially for Kenya and for the whole world. Um, Beauty with a Purpose is a very big um, platform. And for me, I've been um, engaging with a lot of charities for the past two and a half, three years. So I was the ambassador for Women for Cancer. I was working with Heart Kenya, which was against human trafficking. Uh, this was in 2016. And then since 2016, I've been working with an organization called SOA Foundation. And I was trying to stop the practice of uh, widow inheritance and widow cleansing, where women would be forced to sleep with other men and lots of other, other um, issues for her and her children uh, in terms of having to be able to live a proper life, getting education, mm -hmm. getting a home, and a lot of other issues. I feel being a woman, it's um, one of the first basic instincts I have is to help another woman because it's, it's, it's so hard. It, it's so hard in today's world. I find life is so much easier for me because of what my mother and other women out there have gone through and done. And um, it's, it's, it's only right of me to do something for them. However, for my Miss World project, um, I'm thinking of doing something to do with hygiene mm -hmm. because um, if, if, and I really hope I do win Miss World, um, then whichever project I choose will be a very global project and something like video cleansing though is very important mm -hmm. um, is only very relevant in a few countries maybe Kenya and uh, very few other countries so I want to focus on a project that I can actually be able to use to help a wider range of women and to do a greater deal of work with at the same time I'm not going to abandon any of my current projects and I want to continue doing what I'm doing yeah I love 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 that all right so do you see yourself perhaps um, working together helping each in with each other with those projects most certainly most certainly I'd love to help Buddhi and I'm sure he'd love to love uh, helping uh, one thing I believe in is um, 
most organizations, um, the government and the NGOs, whenever they want to deal with or what she was saying, let's say, about women cleansing, yeah. mm. they usually put more effort mm. on educating the girl child mm. and they forget that most communities who do this is a male-dominated community right. where men make all the decisions, yeah. right? So if you come, you separate the boys from the girls, you give all the education to the girls, and you forget the boys who, when they grow up, they're the ones who are going to be making the decisions. Do you think it's a bit of waste of time? Robert, for president, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> we also need to bring the boy child yes. or the men into the conversation at the end of the day. I love, love, love. Yeah, I think we need to mix them together mm. so that the men can understand who women are. Yes. They would understand how to respect women. They would know how to relate with women so that when they grow off age and they become men, it would be easy for them to value their women yeah. as compared to them just staying on the side waiting for women to have all the knowledge they have, then they grow and they still make whatever decision they want. Just run for 2022. That can be, that alone in <laughs> itself is a perfect manifesto. I think that's beautiful. The fact, I'll and I'd love to see you guys working together on that. You are also at some point Miss India Kenya. Yes. Right? How long ago was that? Uh, two years ago. Two years ago. 2016 as well. How did that go? How did that experience go? It was really nice. Um, so winning, I did not expect to win. So yeah. um, when I, uh, for that pageant, I won Miss Photogenic, and I remember going backstage and thinking, uh, they've given me Miss Photogenic, and that's it, you know, they, they've given me one title, and they want me to go home, mm -hmm. and I kept making my deal with God, like, either it's first place or nothing, mm -hmm. either first place or nothing, mm -hmm. and it's been an amazing experience, and I think um, that allowed me to kind of have an edge over the other contestants, because I had experience, a lot of valuable experience in terms of pageantry, um, and in terms of uh, what happens. Right. Also, it allowed me to understand the importance of a crown because it explains to you what the platform means. Mm. People don't take the words of a 20-year-old seriously. It's true. Especially when you're in your early 20s, no matter what you say, people are like, okay. You're still a child. Yeah, it's, it's ash. You know, who knows? Yeah. Tomorrow she'll be married. Tomorrow this will happen. Yes. And they don't really take your words seriously. But what pageantry does is it gives you a platform. It makes sure that you have a voice and that whatever you are saying is heard is listened to and in most cases is understood and that makes it all the more valuable especially because of my continuous efforts to keep on trying to educate people to try and make people understand the problems in society and to just in general explain to them why all this is so important pageantry for me has opened so many doors so many doors because it except for being taken seriously it helps me become this role model that i I've only, until recently, been only for my sister and my brother, and it, it, it just makes me so proud when small girls or anybody comes up to me and they recognize me and they tell me, you know, you did this and we'd like to do this, mm -hmm. or somebody tells me, how can I be a part of this initiative? And for people to um, copy or to want to do the good I do is, is, is such a blessing, it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. All right, so tell me about, you're the first Indian Kenyan to win this title, if I'm not wrong. Well, I'd like to say I'm one of the many Kenyans to win the title, but yes. Yes, yes. And I think that's a good thing because it goes to show our diversity as yes. a nation, right? Especially now that um, uh, Indians in general or the Asians in Kenya have been made the 44th tribe, mm -hmm. um, I think around one or two years ago. And I think it's high time we stop classifying people as Indian Kenyans or, you know, the Kikuyus or mm. the Duas, the, the tribe. Tribe, the tribalism or the, or the differences in cultures should not stand in our way of becoming Kenyan or being proud of being able to represent our countries or to bring honor to our countries. Mm -hmm. um, we, ha we have uh, President Obama who I, I really, really uh, look up to and you know, we took pride in the fact that he was African American and I, I, I'd like that to happen for me too and I'd like for Kenyans to accept me as a Kenyan and I'd still live in my duality and I wouldn't have to let go of one one part, part of, of my life yeah. uh, to be another part, yeah. All right, so as we get ready for you guys to show us how you guys are going to walk yes. or how you guys do walk, um, explain to me, perhaps, um, Robert, for you, because she's hinted that she looks up to uh, Barack Obama, for you, who is that one person that you would love to have dinner with, dead or alive? Wow, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> but... Um, I've been following um, Mr. World mm -hmm. uh, for quite a while. And um, the last guy who won from India, 
as a big inspiration to me wow. because I followed his whole story from where he started his first edition, how he didn't even think he'll make it the cut to be Mr. India, mm -hmm. leave alone be Mr. World. Mm -hmm. So if I was to have dinner with someone, I would definitely have dinner with a guy to get tips on how to win. <laughs> okay. Leakage. Leakage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like that. All right, so are you guys ready to show us and teach us how you do the walk? Of oh, course. Yeah. Okay, so Mandela, please help me with this. So that way we can learn how to do the walk, courtesy of both of you. Please stand up. You're going to teach us how to do the walk. I, perhaps, Robert, you're going to start because this was your thing and you practiced it in front of the mirror. How do the men in Mr. World Kenya do sort of the walk? And you, yeah. Um, where do you want to miss two Let's start? Like, well, perhaps maybe from here and then don't go too far until here. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, all right, do it. So, so there's even a way you all, stand. First of all, <laughs> you have two stands. Okay. You can either stand straight up mm -hmm. or you can do a T. A, a T, T is you just cross your legs like oh. that and you form the T. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Second thing, your head must be up, your shoulders up. Of course, you smile. You look where you're going, mm -hmm. and your fa your right leg always goes fast. Your right leg always goes fast. Always goes fast. Okay. So the reason for using the T is to make sure that your right leg goes fast. Mm -hmm. But even if you stand like this, if you're comfortable, you'll just start with the right leg. Mm -hmm. So I am comfortable always starting like this. And then when you walk, of course, right leg first. Mm -hmm. So you just walk looking up. Mm -hmm. Then when you pause, mm -hmm. that's the pause. Mm -hmm. You can do a step turn. Mm -hmm. A step up. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. A step turn. Uh -huh. And of course, when you turn again, right leg first. Uh -huh. Step turn. Or when you get to your posing position, uh -huh. you can back step and turn. All right. So, wow. Okay. That's like a dance. You have to cram that. <laughs> You have like to have it in here. Yes. And the judges look at all those things. Like, did he start every, with their right foot? They look at every small detail in the walk. Every small detail. All right. Yes. All right. So, finally, your yes. turn. Perhaps you guys can exchange places. So, finally, first of all, you say there are two different kinds of walk. There's the, pageant, the, the pageantry one. Yes. And then there's the one for models. Yes. Which one are you more comfortable with? Which well, one? I can do both for you. Which, okay. So, which okay. one would you like to start so, with? Pageantry. Mm -hmm. Includes a smile. Mm -hmm. um, model walk does not include a smile. Uh -huh. So I think I'll start with the pageant walk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just as he said, women only have one stance to start, mm -hmm. which is the T. Mm -hmm. And I'll speak less and do it first, and then I'll explain it. Okay. Ah. All right. Uh, one of the most important things with pageant walks is that your head has to turn last. You have to make sure people see your face as much as you can possibly. And uh, number two, eye contact. Eye contact. Yes. All right, because I feel like we want to give you more yes. runaway to do your thing. Yes. You've got to have to come here. That's right. Yes. yes, so you can do it very, very well and you have a longer um, stance. Come right here. Yes. Don't be afraid. <laughs> there you go. And that's going to be now your runway. Okay. So there's something that you said. Yes. That for women, okay, there's also the T. Yes. Uh, like yes. he's also the taught tea. us. But um, there's something you said about your head. Yes. Uh-huh. It always turns last. So let me show you. Okay. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. So even if your body has turned, your head is has normally to. the last to turn, especially when you're in front. Oh my goodness. Yes. And you have to learn and cram all that. Uh, I think it's a gradual process where uh, practice makes you kind of learn it. Um, it's, it's not something you consciously think about when you're doing it. Initially, probably yes, mm. but as the years go, as the months go, as the training happens, mm. it becomes a very um, unconscious part of your being. Mm. And it, you can actually see it in almost every Previous, uh, previously been a model uh, or anybody who has done any kind of runway or pageantry, you'll see that in their everyday walk as well. This was going to ask, do you guys find yourself walking like that, like if you're in town or if you're at the mall, you find yourself walking like that and uh, strutting like basically that? Basically for me, um, I had a bounce walk <laughs> before I started all this. Uh -huh. um, and thanks to our trainers, uh -huh. um, specifically Ashok Sunny, mm -hmm. what he did is 
he made me lose my bounds. Mm. Like, he really worked with me to make me lose my bounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, my boys are telling me my walk has changed. Hey, okay. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I am going to come for a high five because I too had a bounce. You, when you were walking? Yes, I too had a bounce. And it was uh, both Ashley and Ashok. And they, they were really proud of me on the final day. And they were like, oh, you lost your bounce. So do you also find yourself walking like that sometimes? Oh, no, but um, I, I realized what I was doing wrong. And then it's, it's, it's a lot of practice, a lot of practice. You, we used to practice from morning till sometimes midnight. And then I'd still go home and practice. I'd make sure I practice a lot. All right. So that one was the pageantry? No, that was the runway walk. The runway walk. All right. Now you're going to show us the pageant. Again? Okay. The pageant. Oh, wait. The, oh, right. Yes. yes. The runway was the one from there to there. And that's the one where you do not smile. The, uh, the I did one. not smile in the, the smile. Both are very similar, but uh -huh. uh, the thing with uh, pageant walks are like there are a lot of turns because uh -huh. uh, you, you, you're you trying to have a very big presence on stage. Uh -huh. So with pageantry, it's you who's trying to be present. You're trying to get judges and the audience to notice you. With runway, because runway is mainly for the clothes or for the bags or whatever accessories you're trying to pull off. So you're trying to get the attention to go away from you mm. and more onto the items that you're trying to showcase. Mm -hmm. And that's why they do not uh, smile. For runway, it's normally you go in front, you walk, and you come back. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas pageantry, you go, you turn, 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 smile, 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 camera, camera, camera. You try and do as many turns as you can. And normally, it's choreographed. Uh, pageantry is very choreographed. Okay, all right. So before we close off this conversation, I'd love to know, first of all, what is that one thing that may perhaps within the pageantry world here in Kenya that you'd love to fix, a challenge within the industry? Um, I'd say it's lack of information. Mm. Um, a lot of people think of it as a one-off thing. They want to take part in a pageant and assume their lives will be transformed thereafter. That is not how pageantry works. You have to work for years, perhaps months, um, before you can actually feel confident enough to take part in a pageant because the pageant isn't supposed to change your life. It is you in the process of doing the pageant that you're supposed to work to change your own life and become the best version of yourself, trying to change your life. And even after the pageant, people assume, oh, you know, the pageant gets over and your life is transformed. Right. But it's a lot of hard work even after. And you have to be willing to put in the hard work. Pageantry is not about yourself, as uh, Kula said earlier. It's, it's, it has very little to do with what you are doing or what you want from life. And so much more to do with how you want uh, to get these means and um, who or who you're going to affect or how you're going to um, try and help society because at the end of the day we haven't to become um, I haven't become Miss Finale or I haven't you know or he hasn't become Mr. Kula or anything like that at this point nobody wants to come and address me as Finale I am henceforth addressed as Miss World Kenya mm. when I'll go for the Miss World competition I will be called Kenya mm. I don't think one or any of the 126 contestants will know me by my name so I'm becoming an embodiment of my country, of my culture, of my people, the history. And it's, it's so important to me to represent them well. At this point, it's, I have to cease, as I often say, I have to cease being myself and start being a representation of my country. Wow, yes. I love that. All right, so for you, Robert, perhaps um, your word of advice, especially to the young men who would love to do what you're doing. Um, uh, before I go to the word of advice, uh, if I would answer the same question yeah. on what I would want uh, to change, mm -hmm. is uh, we usually tend to find ourselves in a position where whenever um, a Kenyan is representing the country out there, we don't get as much support from, from our fellow Kenyans right. as much as we would. Right. So the thing is, this is not just, if I go out there to represent Kenya as Mr. World Kenya, the title is not for Kula Budi. Yes. The title is for Kenya as a country. So we need votes, we need comments, we need, we need, we need a lot. Support. We need support. Right. Because out there you'll find countries like, the reason why countries like India win is because even if you go to YouTube right now, everyone talks about the guy. Literally everyone. He comes back to his country and Everyone wants to go to the airport to get him, you know, mm -hmm. everyone wants to meet him, everyone wants to talk about him. Mm -hmm. would love to get the same thing here. Yeah. Right, so and uh, secondly, we would, uh, the government pledged to really work with uh, the winners of 2018. Yes. Of course, me and Beautiful Finale. Mm -hmm. um, we would really want the government to be fully involved. It will help us achieve the goals that we have and everything that we've set to, to do to for do. the country right. and the people. Okay. 
And word of advice to the young guys who are coming out there is, um, I don't think there's a limitation to anything. You can actually achieve anything that you want, even if you see it really far-fetched. Okay. And we're going to leave it there because of time, but that's yes. such a positive note to leave it at. Yes. Thank you guys so Thank much, Filani and Robert, and congratulations and all the best Thank in you. representing Kenya on international you. platform. Can I you just say one amazing. last thing? Or, one sentence. All right, I one sentence. I want to ask everyone to vote for us. Um, go on Mobstar, search for Finale Galea, and start voting by right swiping my pictures and every like counts as a vote and will help me in going forward in Miss World. And the same goes for Booty. All right. So let, guys, let's show them the support yes. that they need. This is, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to dive into the conversation of how we can take care of our skins, especially more so skin conditions. But that's the conversation we'll be having. We'll be taking a look at acne.